Hello, this is Vijay at SST Systems. Glad to share with you what's new with K-Pipe 7.0. We released it last week, uh, October 23rd, and uh, the word is slowly getting out that we have this new K-Pipe which is more powerful than ever, easier than ever, and of course the most continues to be the most cost-effective solution in the industry. So let's begin with uh, K-Pipe, um, what it can do, and what's new, and I'll show you the screens briefly, and we'll continue from there. First off, uh, I want to show you the two most important analysis features that we have introduced in 7.0. Let me first open K-Pipe, and open the last model that I already was working on. As you can see, K-Pipe opens with three screens of information. The graphics is separate, the layout window here is separate, and the list window is separate. So the first thing I want to show you is that we increased the number of thermal loads possible from 3 to 10. I believe that's the uh, highest number in any tool in the industry today. But this is how you do it. So we go into options uh, if you already have a license or if you're working with the free evaluation copy you go into temperature and turn this um, select the number 10 here and it will obviously allow you now to enter up to 10 pairs of temperatures and pressures that you see here which I have already done for you so T1, P1, T2, P2 and so forth up to T10, P10 and uh, we also have the additional inputs from before the specific gravity for each load the additional weight if you have any like snow loads and so forth and whether this load will s have wind as part of it so once you have entered that you now are free to enter up to 10 thermal displacements or specified displacements as we call it in k-pipe for any settlements, vessels uh, movement, mm, any expansions from an adjoining system and so forth. Here. I have not entered any, but you can do that. And now the next important thing we did was increase the number of wind loads from one standard, which we used to have before, to four. Now this four uh, wind loads, you can run all of them together in the same run. So you might want to analyze for X direction wind load, maybe Z direction wind load, or a combination like X and Z. Uh, like here, I have defined X and Z. It's at like a 45 degree uh, in the XZ plane. And if you may also be, uh, you may also want to define a load in the opposite direction the minus x minus z. So what k will do now is it will analyze all four loads and report only the worst uh, in the for the stresses. And of course it will report you the support loads for each separate wind load. The same applies to the thermal cases too. Now once you increase uh, the number of thermal loads and number of wind loads, now the total that we're going to end up with uh, possibly for analysis will be close to uh, 95 here I have 76 but uh, as you can see here all the thermal expansion uh, cases including the ranges are here and the winds that we just entered there's a static seismic component and if you want to do model analysis here in this model and we will also uh, I'll show you here briefly uh, another model which has uh, some of the other loads that I have already entered for this demonstration purposes. In this case you will see that we have close to or we have exactly 98 load cases that we can analyze for and KPIP will analyze for all of these cases and then present you the results. So to summarize we have increased the number of thermal loads to 10 and the number of wind loads to 4 with these you are now able to define up to 100 load cases or two less than 100. Now 
The other thing we did was, of course, uh, for most of you who are working in the power process industries, uh, you need access to the latest piping codes. So we have the piping codes. The main uh, B31 piping codes are all updated. So we have um, B31 1, 3, 4, 5, and 8. And we also updated the European code, the 13480, to the latest editions as of um, um, October 2013. And uh, we also updated the material libraries from these B31 piping codes. I'm not going to show them to you, but those material libraries are available in case you wanted to load materials from them. Now, the other thing we did, which is uh, kind of interesting f for many of you, I think, will be in case you have a limit stop, let's say. Uh, let me go back to the big model here. In case you have a limit stop, for example, a limit stop could initially be only aligned along one of the global axes, the X, Y, and Z, and you had to define uh, manually if it was in a skewed direction. Now, we have added these three new buttons here, axial, shear, Y, shear, Z, which essentially allow you to orient the limit stop along the skewed pipe axis. So if you wanted to uh, go along Y, for example, in this case, it won't make much of a difference because we have, as you can see here, right here, uh, this is along the X axis. But for example, if we had a limit stop, if we wanted a limit stop along this incline here, which is going in the 45 degree uh, angle, this feature would be really helpful. You could orient your limit stop along that pipe axis. And you can do the same thing for a skewed restraint too. So the other thing I want to talk to you about, uh, which might be useful, is we have added what's called user allowables. Now here, there are three or four support types that we have, which is mainly for um, anchors, uh, generic supports, nozzles and restraints. You can define what the allowables are. Let's say you have from a ma um, numbers coming from a manufacturer, you can put them in here and you can do your own code compliance, if you will. And the other thing is, we have uh, uh, fixed a number of um, small user interface improvements that just make it easier for you to work with the system. So let's analyze the model and we will uh, see the results in just a bit. So this has about 75 or uh, 80 load cases and uh, we will see how long it takes. 13 seconds. Let's look at the results. Uh, first, we look at sorted stresses. You can see sustained and expansion. And we can see that the expansion is overstressed. And we can also see these stress contour. Uh, now the thing that you want to know here is that K-pipe displays the maximum stress from all of the 55 thermal load cases, the range cases and the uh, regular expansion load cases. Uh, same way for sustain, maximum of 10 pressures. And when you have wind, it will show you the maximum of the wind cases. Wind, seismic, spectrum, response spectrum, anything. And individual load cases are also reported here. You can see um, if you go to element forces, and you can see sustained here. And you can actually cycle through the load cases. These are the load cases for which KPAP has computed the result and we can cycle through all of them. That's the 10th, W plus P10, you can see here in the title bar. And um, this is the first expansion load case, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and then the ranges. This will go all the way up to T9 minus T10, right here. And uh, we also have support loads. Now that's where I want to spend a minute or two here. For the support load summary, you will see that it shows you the 10 operating load cases. And you have a minimum and a maximum. 
and they are shown in red only because we have not entered any allowables or the allowables are assumed to be zero and since um, these maximums are and minimums absolute value wise are more than zero they're shown in red so you could have put in your own user allowables and they would have showed up here you have support load summary for all the supports in the system anchor guide limit stop user hangers this is for the guide and let's look at one of the limit stops same thing restraints and so forth so all the support load summary across all the cases analyzed will be shown here and if you wanted to see the individual support loads they would be here for each load case so just like before you have all of these load cases for which there are support loads at each support so here these are the support loads for the seventh operating case there's one more thing I want to cover which is the API 610 the pump reports we have uh, updated that and you can actually create up to 10 rotating e equipment reports based on that so that's it for uh, this uh, intro which has already actually gone more than what I thought it would and uh, pipes analysis um, can be a complex task but I'm very sure that KPIP can simplify that for you. Try it. If you don't have a license, get our free evaluation copy. Um, if you like it, then uh, you can try different uh, real world models with it and let us know what you think. This is a big milestone for us and we hope, uh, we sincerely hope that uh, you can benefit from it. Thank you.